And it's time for the next Unknown Pleasures, uh, Tuesday the 15th of October. And it's a film called Godplex. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the director of Godplex, uh, Darcy Gladwin, and to the co-curator of Unknown Pleasures, Bill Masoulis. Welcome, Bill and Darcy. Hello, Peter. Hi, Peter. Now, uh, Darcy, uh, this is such an intriguing film, a, a sort of absurdist and experimental. It's, it's a whole range of things. And it was made a number of years ago. Tell me about the history of the film and that it really hasn't been seen by many people. No, that's true. Uh, to be honest, I've never been very integrated into the cinema culture in terms of I've uh, never been a, a movie buff or a movie, um, you know, a cinema file. Uh, I did my training when I was a child watching uh, late night horror movies. Um, and then I discovered filmmaking at high school and that's what I decided I wanted to do. And then I got sidetracked into a career in the graphic art and typography. But that all came around because it exposed me to commercial art and then I started training myself to do photography, cinematography and yeah, and all sorts of things like this. So um, one thing led to another and uh, 10 years in, in the commercial art um, had a life crisis, I suppose, and gave gave up the farm and uh, <laughs> did a deep dive off the deep end into into film and uh, music world and uh, haven't looked back really. So uh, I guess um, I've made various shorts. I was lucky, lucky enough to have my first short, my first serious short, um, win a couple of uh, awards at the local university in Auckland where I'm from. And that kind of like gave me, you know, I was very surprised uh, that that happened. Um, so it, that gave me a, an early springboard and confidence. And then I just went experimental, I suppose, for one reason or the other, not really consciously. I just, uh, I applied um, various schools of thought to my filmmaking. But in one way or another, I think it kind of, I, I think about the conscious uh communication and uh, subconscious and I think somewhere in my uh, being they're kind of like mixed up uh, a little <laughs> bit so you know yeah, maybe that's good uh, I don't know but we're finding out and um, obviously it's a niche film uh, and, a, and a niche style that I've got going for, 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 for better or for worse and it was always my um, intention to to move toward feature film and and when I when I decided early on to, to that I would have a life in film I didn't know what that would be specifically. Um, documentary. My my father was a, a, a activist, so documentary was strong in that vein of things. And and fiction, as I, as I mentioned, uh, watching the horror movies and just all sorts of junk TV in the seventies. Um, you know, we we got saturated with uh, storytelling of all different kinds. So that was my that was my training ground. And I guess. Yeah, so the feature, and and I was touring as a musician, and then Shane Hollins, who's 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 the poet, um, who was touring with me. I was, I, he's a very confident man, and and he delivers with his voice on the stage. I said, actually, mate, you you might be my man to 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 front this movie, and so we started writing together. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. tell me about constructing the story because uh, the story of this aspiring cult leader and all the bits and pieces that go around that. Um, how did you put that all together? Uh, the original original conception, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Shane... He he left it to me to, you know, to be the writer director. Uh, he contributed an awful lot. He he's got a good historical brain. He he likes history and of course literature and poetry and that sort of thing. So that, those were his domains. But very much, he left me to do my thing, which was which was great. Um, I applied standard uh, three act structure. Um, I wanted it to be conventional and in, in, in form. Uh, and that applied to the cinematography as well, so which was something that I was geared up to do, having my knowledge of, of cameras and all that sort of thing. So, 
Uh, yeah, the story, I, I'm not exactly sure the colonel, but um, I guess cult, there, was a, there was a local cult in our neighbourhood uh, in the 70s. It was a chap who was a travelling vacuum salesman, vacuum cleaner salesman, <laughs> uh, who started a cult and got lots of people who were um, not happy in the suburbs to join his cult. And um, everything went tits up. They, of course, um, they had a beautiful property in north uh, of Auckland and it's just been bought by Chinese for development so it'll all get t pulled down. So the building's actually lasted for that long since the 70s, 80s. So um, finally it's getting... Uh, demolished, but um, yeah, no, they they were they were brewing MDMA, and they had all sorts of um, sexual assault, uh, incestual <laughs> kind of stuff going on, as you you know standard behaviour. Um, lost the plot, um, so that was around. You know, we we you know we stayed well clear of that kind of thing uh, in our growing up. But uh, funnily enough, um, the second year, once I came to Melbourne, I went back to do the second part of filming, and I ended up staying on that property because it got taken over by an arts collective so that was really weird and well it's just synchronous uh, synchronous and um and the jacket that shane ended up wearing the pinstripe came from the basement so so it was kind of an interesting uh, overlap um it was, yeah so okay so let, let's explore this a bit further because of uh, the way that you've just described um how how did that all fit together uh, in terms of creating that ninety four minute narrative? Um, right. And yeah, and uh, and how how easy was it to have production support so that you could actually do all the filming and uh, make the film? Right, I, I, I kind of like geared myself up to be a Swiss Army knife of filmmaking um, simply because I don't like people saying no to me. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm a natural editor. I discovered that, and funnily enough, uh, reflecting onto the typography, um, there's this um, there's this uh, language uh, similarity between typography and the art of letters and pictograms with editing, where you're combining ideas basically. Um, mm. And uh, you know, so yeah, one way one way or another, uh, I just took up editing naturally and yeah I guess uh, you know the camera once I got into cameras I found them absolutely fascinating I started on 35 millimeter and sport, spent an absolute fortune uh, photographing flowers and landscapes and things like this uh, getting my exposures uh, nailed um, and then uh, it was about the same time then uh, digital video cameras came in so I went straight onto that and I'm a computer kid so that was all native uh, the big challenge for me is writing and I don't profess to be an amazing writer, but I do love the challenge of writing it, and I'm going to keep going till I drop now, so uh, in different ways. So, um, yeah, just, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I just, I studied, I studied writing for, you know, I've, I'm still studying it, to be honest. Um, it's always a learning experience every day with this stuff. So, um, you know, I read the big books, you know, and, uh, uh, and just applied that knowledge, this conventional knowledge, uh, to this film, which I, which I knew had to be under a fairly tight control. Otherwise, it could just be messy, I suppose, a collage movie. But nothing wrong with that, but that's not what I wanted. Okay. Now I'm interested to know um, the limited screenings or, or very few screenings that the film has had and the issues you've had with that. And then Bill can come in about why uh, you selected the film for Unknown Pleasures. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you. Oh, where, where, where are you, Darcy? <laughs> that's, the, that's the native wildlife over there. It's a yellow <laughs> honda or something. Uh, I'm just outside the Collingwood <laughs> Library. <laughs> oh, right. I, I yeah. know the area. Yeah, yeah. Because um, we just got expelled from the library because they closed it one. I didn't realize. I had it all set up inside <laughs> to have the sci-fi kind of, you know, academic kind of vibe. But now I'm out in the park, so... Ah, cool. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, look, it's just an uphill battle, and it's a familiar story for for all filmmakers. Um, yeah, uh, I applied to all the, um, you know, uh, I guess 
I mean, there was a, there was a whole mix of amateurs and professionals involved in the film. That was a really good combination. I thought maybe the professional actors might have some kind of like you know key way into industry or you know culture, but nothing really happened with that. Um, and I, I, I contacted our funding bodies in New Zealand, Creative New Zealand, and Film Commission. Uh, nothing really, although we did get some funding for uh, part of the soundtrack uh, composition um, from Creative New Zealand, which was wonderful to get a little bit of support and get their logo on the, on the thing. Um, uh, the Film Commission, they, I think about the time, what I've realised in sort of retrospect perhaps is that the film industry or the film culture was becoming more commercialised. Mm. Um, what, I, what I realized was that uh, international film festivals weren't, they were selecting films that would come from the commission as opposed yeah. to just random. Yeah. Right. So there's this kind of like industrial kind of like uh, approach to the culture. And I, 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 you know, when I went to, I decided to launch, try and launch the film from the top, uh, from the top. So Berlin, Cannes, you know, um, and I went to Berlin and I met the lady from the Film Commission, the marketing lady, and she invited me for tea at the Ritz. And <laughs> it was lovely tea. And she said, oh, Darcy, I think maybe you should make the theatre. <laughs> and I was like, well, <laughs> um, I said, well, thank you for that. Uh, actually, right now I am making theatre in London um, on a fringe scale because I decided to make a play um, about this uh, infamous comedian who ended up squatting his abandoned floating restaurant in London. Um, so we made a play about him and uh, he had his biography printed and took it to Edinburgh French. So I was in a, in a way doing exactly what she said, but anyway, she was obviously not going to support my film endeavors. Um, and yeah, nothing's really changed there. Obviously I'm not creating work that's palatable or commercial, but commercial, I think, is what we're looking for, Tim. Um, in terms of the arts culture, yep, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's still there. I get a little bit sick of writing proposals these days. <laughs> oh, good, good on you. I'm, I'm with you. I think a lot of independent filmmakers feel the same. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the uphill battle is real. I mean, it's always, it's, it is always this way. And I, I am a DIY guy, uh, you know, um, and I don't say no. And I just do. And I just, uh, you know, put on screenings and you just be humble. And you just, I threw, I did so many events through my music days. I'm, I'm used to hard knocks. I'm used to the fact mm -hmm. that uh, when you go in front of the public at any level, people are going to knock you. Uh, it's like going to war. You know, and 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 no one likes a self promoter. People don't. Mm. They need their they need their gatekeepers to say, look, this is okay. Otherwise, you know, people they don't they don't understand the framework. It's like um, I totally understand, but mm. I'm an, I'm a very open minded person. Um, I don't necessarily go out seeking weird and wonderful things. I just whatever comes to me, I'll check it out and you know appraise it and if it's my can or whatever. But uh, a lot of people seem to just need the the key to the gateway open for them. Um, so that's why I'm so grateful to Bill for sticking through with this process for about five years. We've been talking about this. Ah. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been aware aware of you for the last five six years, and um, yeah. Of of what you just said then, yeah, it is it is the case. Like there is still this kind of bias, this prejudice in a lot of uh, audience members that, that a work of art has to be officially sanctioned. And and in the film world, um, it operates like that quite a bit because, uh, because, because uh, the amount of money it costs to make films, which is quite huge, although ironically, of course, with independent filmmaking, it's quite cheap. Um, but it's kind of like this thing, a lot of the festivals are tied in, as you said, to the commercial sphere now and um, to the to the marketing of the films. And so it's it's almost like the audience is still, like the audience is so stupid, they're so backward. They kind of think that, you know, because it's officially sanctioned by, you know, a big festival and, and by the funding body, that therefore it must be, you know, legit. And, and a genuine work of art. So there's this, 
So, you know, we artists in the underground, you know, we know a bit better and there is a whole kind of, you know, underground ecosystem uh, going on, um, especially, you know, against that kind of mainstream. And the split between the two is quite a lot these days, um, especially in Australia, which is a very capitalist and commercial kind of society here. So, um, but yeah, Peter, to answer your question, yeah, I saw, I think, I, yeah, I saw a cut of Godplex um, about five, six years ago when when I kind of met Darcy for the first time when he was still in Melbourne uh, for a little while. And, yeah, I just thought it was such an intriguing film, like just so surreal and absurdist and, and um and and so um full of interesting little moments and i think i think the cut that we're presenting um you know this tuesday coming uh is different from the cut that i saw i mean darcy would know what the differences are i think you tightened it a bit darcy and you rearranged the order of some things but um but yeah it's uh, yeah, and and yeah, I, I kind of almost wanted to screen it back then, five years ago. But I knew Darcy was still kind of you know working on it, and and wanting to restructure. And then two years ago, we had a chance to screen it at the Thornbury Picture House. But but Darcy was just he, he's such a traveller that he was passing through Australia, and he was in Melbourne for about two three weeks, and the cinema was just not available those couple of weeks i remember in early december 2022 but finally now yeah we're able to put it on and um so we're you know i'm really happy about that and to see what kind of uh, audience response and and we've also got a great guy uh doing the q a moderation simon strong simon's a real kind of you know underground figure he comes from london and he was part of the punk scene there and and he's been like a book publisher and and also like a, a novelist himself experimental kind of novels he writes and and he's a musician and uh and and a, and a writer and, and a thinker he's a real kind of alternative guy and I'm, I'm curious to see what kind of questions he poses to Darcy in the q a um this Tuesday so uh, yeah, so finally we're we're screening this film. Yeah, Godplex at last. So that's that's good to see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Darcy, where you have shown it to some people, um, what sort of feedback did you get? Um, so I started with um, I I noted the the the. the the value of uh, getting audience feedbacks uh, from a Hollywood kind of commercial uh, perspective. Um, so I took that on and um, <laughs> started having uh, screenings in my warehouse in Melbourne, uh, you know, rough cuts. So first of all, in the editing room, I'd show, because I'd never edited a feature and it was it was yeah. really challenging. Um, scenes were easy to edit, um, but then the whole thing was, uh, yeah. So I'd invite people into the edit room, I'd watch and, but it was very, very difficult to to get to to um, to uh, to uh, get. So the advice would be great, but sometimes it wouldn't um, be directly uh, relative re relating Relative. to what yeah. they were thinking it was. So I, I discovered that I needed to kind of interpret. Um, what they were saying, who they were, why they were, say, why they were t saying what they were trying to mm -hmm. say. And that was mm -hmm. kind of really interesting. Um, and then I took to the screenings in my warehouse uh, and once again just gathered all my feedbacks um, and then slowly but surely, uh, yeah, put it together. Um, yeah, and then like like Bill said, I did, um, so I basically held those screenings and then when I when I've, was happy that I made the film, I started showing it in Auckland. I had a large, uh, we, we rented, I suppose you might say, a, a large, awesome cinema in uh, Devonport, Auckland, and filled the cinema. It was a cast and crew, ostensibly, and whoever else. So I filled it with about 110 people. Um, that was a private preview. And uh, not much feedback came from that. Uh, it, was, it was quite, I think it was quite shocking. <laughs> 
uh, one that I'd finished it, <laughs> and I turned up five, six years later with a finished movie. Two that I'd invited everybody to, to the screening. Um, my, uh, probably about sixty percent was cast and crew. The other forty percent, I didn't even ask for money. So I, you know, I spent quite a lot on that. But that's okay. It was a nice thank you to the community, and um, and from there, I think uh, I had a that's right RMIT I was grateful to find their theatre in, um, in uh, uh, Swanson Street so we had a private preview there that was almost a full house it was great um, not much feedback coming back from that I think part of the battle with this with this stuff also um, it's not what people say to your face it's what they say behind you <laughs> behind behind your back right mm. um, people are unsure yeah. Of themselves, probably a lot, a lot of the time. Um, you know, what's their reference point? And and mm -hmm. I think part of, part of the big battle for me is is being trying to, you know, because of my commercial background, I, I do believe that I'm quite good at presenting things very well, you know, and showing how it sort of fits into the, uh, you know. But um, you know, I think you know the character in that film gets up to all sorts of dodgy stuff, including, um, you know, his followers are all women. Um, and he rejects the only man who turns up. And, you know, I'm sure that I got a lot of background uh, negative press on that one. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I, uh, you know, and, yeah, uh, what happened, I put it all out in Wellington for followers to come. That's what happened. It was all women and there was one guy. So I was like, okay, well, let's capitalise on this. Um, Luckily, most of the actors, uh, most of the people who turn up, the women were professional actors. So um, that made, and we improvised the scene. So it was all, you know, it was all kosher. And um, and then we had the teenagers as well, the teenage girls. When we put the call out uh, for for followers, teenage followers, the, the parents would turn up with their teenage girls. And um, I was like, well, we just got to work with this. And I said, well, okay, well, one of them sits on your knee and and whispers something in your ear. And Shane was like, oh, God, oh, no. And I was like, well, yeah, this, is, this is the cult. <laughs> and what she said to him was, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I hope that was, I hope that was make-believe. Um, <laughs> and that's why the look on his eye when she pops off his knee, he was just, like, mortified. <laughs> um so anyway, luckily enough, uh, we, you know, um, well, it's just the way it, way it turns out. So I'm digressing here. Um, then I had a screening in London. I moved to London and uh, one of the first things I did, well, when I ended up on this uh, comedian's boat, uh, well, my life got, I was married and had a child and we moved to London and, and my life completely turned upside down when I got robbed and lost everything. And at that point, my wife said, I'm leaving. She didn't even know I got robbed. I was horrified. I was, I was, I was mortified. I was, and I was just going to get a job and get my life back on the track. But she phoned me coincidentally and said, I'm going back to Melbourne. I was like, oh God. So you can imagine I just I absolutely lost everything. Um, uh, but uh, obviously, I decided not to follow um, her and my child to uh, rural Victoria um, and stay on in the city. But that was a tough decision, um, clearly. Uh, and um, I would have had a lovely, uh, no doubt, well, debatable uh, existence in rural Victoria, which is beautiful. Um, but I am a city guy and I needed to pursue that. And uh, I did come back here to... Um, see what would happen with my relationship with um, my child but that turned really bad against me and um, so long story uh, I had a screening in London I've had a screening in Berlin uh, screening in Sydney uh, screening in Dunedin Wellington uh, another one in Auckland yeah that's about it I think okay wow sounds like the makings of another film uh... <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. No uh, doubt. Yeah, no some, doubt. someone should really make a documentary of your life, Darcy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and it's, I hard did... knocks. it's, it's yep. hard knocks, but I'm a relentless positivist, all right? You can't keep me down. I'm just It's just the way I'm wired, so. Okay, mm. that's great. I, I just wanted to ask you about casting. Uh, Gil Tucker, who uh, I recognised, oh, yes. is in the film. Uh, and right. how, did, how did you find the Exolotl? Okay, great, great. Actually, Gil, 
just wrote me uh, half an hour before this conversation for the first time in 20 years almost, I think, um, because after, you know, I invited him to screenings, but he would never turn up. And, you know, he's an industry guy, as you know. Mm. and um mm. you know another connection which i thought might work in my favor but no no so he was kind of like oh well you know i guess stand backish to see what would happen with it and now finally 20 years later he's like i'd love to come but i'm out of town uh so he sees the, that uh, bill has written and so he's seen the credibility go up which is great um i've invited him to coffee he said he's, he's out on phillip island now so um if he comes into town, he's, we're going to have a catch up for coffee. And the way that whole worked out was um, my first job in Melbourne when I came here in 2005 was uh, delivering fruit. And um, it was for $15 an hour and starting at midnight, uh, packing all the orders, um, packing over a ton of fruit and vegetables onto the truck, driving around all over Victoria State. Uh, mostly uh, down the peninsula and also down Port Seaway at Berlin. Um, and uh, it was a great job, um, although the midnight till oof, sometimes midday was pretty hard yakka. Um, uh, yeah, but I held it together for six months. And in that period, I guess a lot happened because I crashed his truck. I mean, it kind of been the I kind of, kind of been the worst thing. But I just. I just, I have this thing with authority figures as well. They're not necessarily, they annoy me, right? So I was delivering fruit to the um, the headquarters of Mercedes-Benz in um, Mulgrave. And uh, the, the chef down in the basement, he was not, not a happy chap. And he had that gate, you know, which, so I'd turn up at the gate. Oh, got the fruit here, mate. Got the fruit and veg. Got your coriander. He'd say, okay, he'd open the gate. One day he just didn't open the gate. And I just got annoyed, so I just drove through the gate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I and um, he when I got down to him, he said, uh, "You just drove through the gate." I said, "What? No, um, no, I don't think so." He said, "Yeah, it's on camera." I said, "Oh, well, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I don't know. We'll talk about it, whatever." So then I called. My, uh, then I talk, called Gil. I didn't realise he was an actor, famous actor. I said, "Mate, you're not going to like this, but uh, I've just you know done this thing." And he said, "Okay, mate." <laughs> it's going to need a new gate. That's what we found out like the two days later. This is insurance. I mean, insurance bulletproof on driving jobs, luckily. And he says it's going to need a new arm, and we've done that. And he didn't really, he didn't really wrap me on the knuckles. I, you know, I could have been fired instantly, obviously. But um, so yeah. So go figure. And um, then I said, look, I'm making a movie. Do you want to be in it? <laughs> no, first of all, I said. Um, I, I really like your offices. It's got a really nice vintage feel. This is in St Kilda. Um, can I use it as a as a as a thing for my movie? And he said, "Yeah, okay." And I said, oh, "By the way," and he said, "I'm in." All oh, right. I said, "Do you want to be the boss in, in the thing?" He said, "Yeah, okay." So we filmed in his office. I mean, it's generous, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, wow. You know, uh, and. Oh. Since yeah, since then I only lasted six months in the in the job, and then I handed it in, and then I went to uh, New Zealand back to do filming and, and another music tour. So, uh, so that was all good. And then um, the actual lot. Well, short story on that one. Um, when I was a child, my brother, who's four years older than me, he had an axolotl, and. Um, for one reason or another, I just thought it was a nice symbol of kind of like, you know, the human god over the domain of the uh, kind of like very sensitive kind of amphibian. Mm. Okay. Fair enough. I like symbolism. Uh, <laughs> very good. All right. Now, my uh, Zoom is rapidly running out. Uh, Bill, can you tell us about um, what's happening okay. on Tuesday at the... Uh, um, uh, screening of uh, Godplex. Uh, yeah, so it's the screening is um, yeah this coming Tuesday, uh, October fifteen at eight thirty p.m. I think it's eight thirty on the dot. Yep, and it's at the Thornbury Picture House. Um, and yeah, yeah, basically. It's, uh, you know, Darcy will be there as the filmmaker. We'll have a Q&A afterwards, uh, moderated by Simon Strong. And uh, all people are welcome to come along. It's not like a private, uh, 
you know, film society, some weird kind of thing. It's in a commercial cinema, the Thornbury Picture House, and it's a very nice cinema. So uh, people can basically look on the website of the Thornbury Picture House and, and you know, book tickets there, or there, there'll probably be a few uh, tickets on the door as well, maybe. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically what's happening. And... Uh, yeah, I can't really say anything more than that. So let's see how we go. Well, I hope the screening goes well on the 15th of <laughs> October. And uh, uh, Darcy, I'm sure you're going to be intrigued by the feedback that you get and the uh, and, and the event itself and the uh, questioning and so on. And, uh, and Bill, congratulations on finding another unknown pleasure as uh, part of this uh, series of films. So we've been speaking to Darcy Gladwin. Oh, absolutely. There, there's there's so many independent filmmakers out there, Peter. I'm discovering more and more people as, as time goes along. And, and, and there's also a real kind of um, movement at the moment of people uh, shooting on film, shooting on 16 or even Super 8 or even 35 mil. And so mm -hmm. shooting on the film and then editing digitally and... And, and and a lot of them are, are younger filmmakers. They're you know in their twenties or early thirties, and it's kind of like they're discovering that that magic of celluloid for themselves, even though you know it's a digital age we live in. So so all kinds of interesting things happening in the in the underground, the independent uh, underground here. Mm. Good to hear, and I'm glad that you're. Uh pivotal in screening a lot of those uh, films and uh, and those and getting those filmmakers out there so Darcy and Bill thank you so much for talking to me uh, unknown pleasures October 15th uh, Godplex thanks so much for talking with me no worries Peter awesome thanks Peter then. yeah um, th thanks 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 Bill thanks Peter nice no worries Darcy yeah